My name is Andy Dubois. I am the chairman of the Republican Liberty Caucus of Lake Sumter. I want to thank each and every one of you tonight for showing up to our program. My partner in sponsoring this event is Rick Carlin. He is from the Lake County. Let's give Rick a hand. We'll be hearing from Rick in a minute. He's uh, from the Lake County, Florida Republican Assembly. Our hope here tonight is that this proves to be an informative event regarding the consequential election that we experienced in 2020. I assure you that there are some strong, committed, patriotic Americans here tonight that will share with you their experience and their hope as to how we might right the path of our country right now. Okay. Thank you so much. We must now bring to the podium Pastor Caleb Ring, who has so generously allowed us to meet here at River Church Claremont. Please, a rousing welcome for Pastor Caleb. excited to hear Dr. David. A guy that dresses that well, you definitely want to listen to everything he says. <laughs> love it, I love it. You can trust a man with a beard. There's wisdom in that. Man, I obviously, I pastor this church. We're a spirit-filled church. I love the presence of God. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. And to this day, when I hear the national anthem of America, oh. I feel the presence of God, which tells me America is not done with this land yet. I believe that. I want to read a scripture to you just to kick off the night because I'm a preacher. That's what we do. For all of you that brought your Bibles tonight, Acts chapter 5, there's a story, verse 34, about a man named Gamaliel, who was an expert in religious law and respected all the people and respected by all the people. He stood up and he ordered that the men be set, sent outside the council chamber for a while. And then he said to his colleagues, Men of Israel, take care of what you are planning to do to these men. Some time ago there was not there was that fellow Thutis, or Thutis who pretended to be someone great, and about 400 people joined him, but he was killed and all of his followers went their various ways. The whole movement literally came to nothing. After him, at the time of the census, there was Judas of Galilee, he got people to follow him, but he too was killed, and all his followers, followers scattered. So my advice is, leave these men alone. Let them go. If they are planning and doing these things merely on their own, it will soon be overthrown. But if it is from God, you will not be able to overthrow them, and you may even find yourselves fighting against God. The moral of this is, of course, that if it is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, it will not fail. And we, of course, are here tonight knowingly about uh, what the world would define a conspiracy, that election fraud is a conspiracy. I mean, we're all fun people, right? <laughs> so we can talk about things. I've been in the, the conspiracy bandwagon for a long time, you know. I know it all, from the gay frogs to the MK Ultra to the Flat Earth to everything under the sun, the socialist, communist agenda to overtake the United States universities, through funding, through education, to brainwash a society. It has all happened. And ultimately, some conspiracies are nothing more than a bunch of misinformation. But a conspiracy is defined as a secret plot or plan by men for their own purposes. And truth be told, conspiracies exist every single day. There is always someone plotting and planning. And if your plot and your plan is to harm, to kill, or to rob from someone innocent, that is by definition wicked. The Bible actually defines the thief, the Satan, as one that came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And so we understand this. I do believe that um, America has been hit by many different conspiracies. Some probably just theory, some well executed, some executed by men of great power, great poise, and great planning. But just as this scripture declares, I believe that if it is of God, 
it will not fail. And if it is of man, it will fail. So, I believe that America's best days are still ahead. I believe that the standpoint that we've got to stand as believers, as Republicans, as conservatives, whatever you want to define yourself as, on the right wing of America, it's interesting that the Bible talks about the sheep and the goats, and the sheep are the ones on the right, and the goats, those honorary bastards, are on the left. <laughs> Never trust a goat, right? But, um, whatever you define yourself as, is I think it's important to keep this viewpoint and the standpoint that we're not fighting from a losing side. We're not fighting from defeat, and we should not be carrying fear or oppression. We should be people full of hope, great expectation, freely declaring that everything done in dark will be brought to light, that everything that has seemed to go on un unchecked, it will be checked. If nothing else by us, in the power of God, it will be checked. I believe that. And so, that doesn't say we don't fight, doesn't say we don't stand, it doesn't mean we don't educate. It means we educate, we fight, we stand from a standpoint of victory in our lives. We will have the victory. God is not finished with America. If you see the star-spangled banner and you feel the presence of God, then that means God is still with this land and our best days are yet ahead. Do you believe that? David shares with us this evening. Thank you, Pastor Caleb. Thank you so much. As I mentioned earlier, both the Republican Liberty Caucus of Lake Sumter and also the Lake County Florida Republican Assembly sponsored this event. Both of these grassroots membership organizations actively work within the Republican Party to advance the principles of fiscal responsibility, constitutional limited government, and free market principles at all levels of our government. We hope to educate, motivate, and encourage our fellow citizens to make a difference, to get involved with the Republican political process in our communities. These are grassroots organizations, and we can also use your help tonight through your donations to help us cover the expenses for this event. So we will now pass the bucket and encourage you to donate if you can. We sure would appreciate it. And be before we begin to show the four minute video demonstrating a hand counting paper ballot process that is currently used in Missouri, Please give a rousing round of applause to Ray, oh, Raven, Raven Sigenthaler, who is the chair of the Florida Teenage Republicans. And Raven is right up there operator in our AV booth tonight. Please, please thank Raven. Raven, could you please show the video? More than 32 counties across 11 United States hand count ballots and do not use electronic tabulators, with more counties in process of transitioning to hand counting. The hand counting process is simple, efficient, and thorough. For the voter, not much will look different, except voters won't have to wait in line to insert a ballot into an electronic tabulator. What we're demonstrating here today is a hand counting table at the precinct level. We've got four folks manning the table. The two folks on the left are reading the ballots. There's a Democrat and a Republican, and they're going through each item on the ballot, and they're reciting in unison what the entry made by the voter is. And the folks on the right side of the table, there's also a Democrat and a Republican, and they are populating the uh, what we call tally sheets. They're recording the votes, and they're doing this for each ballot that is given to them. And this turns out to be a very, very simple process. A keynote to make here is that the ballots are printed with a sequence number to the left of each item or voter selection. The folks that are reading the ballot only need to call out the sequence number for the items marked on the ballot. This way, the two recorders then mark the tally sheets accordingly. 
Note that the columns on the tally sheets correspond with the sequence numbers on the ballots. The recorders only mark those columns with a sequence number called out by the readers. This same process holds true for page two of the ballot, which contains questions or yes-no items marked on the ballot. In fact, we are estimating that on average, most precincts in Florida will use no more than two counting tables on election day to meet their current reporting expectations. Of course, larger precincts will need more counting tables based on anticipated volumes. With the simplicity, the reliability, and the transparency of the hand counting process, I'm certain we could get citizen involvement to man these counting tables at the precinct level. Another point I'd like to make is that should an error occur in the, either the reciting of the items selected by the voter or the markings on the tally sheet, then the process can be stopped at any time by someone at the counting table and it can be corrected. New ballot. One. One. Six. Six. Oh, error I'm going to put my Sharpie down, pick up my pencil, and circle number seven, put the correct dob in the correct spot. When the ballots to be counted are complete, or a single candidate receives 100 votes, which is the limit of our tally sheet, then the tally sheets are summed and reconciled. This process is ongoing, where each reporting judge counts the number of dabbed tally marks at the bottom. They record the number, bring that down across to all of the candidates, all 25 on the tally sheet, and then the sum across the bottom is made and recorded in the very le lower left corner of the front of the tally sheet. So as you can see, hand counting ballots at the precinct level is possible, it is simple, it is reliable and it is transparent. It is the citizen and counting paper ballots who will restore public trust in our elections. I would like to introduce right now the executive vice president of the Florida Republican Assembly, Lou Marin. Well, what an honor to be here, all the patriots, I love it. You know, I, when I'm driving over today, I said, what am I going to say today? Well, real, something real simple. One of the things that uh, I deeply appreciate is, uh, uh, by the way, Andy, thanks for putting this on. Patrick Rain, open your doors. And Rick, thank you for putting this on. And, uh, of course, uh, good, my good friend, uh, Professor Clemens, I appreciate you coming out here. It's a long, long, you've been through a lot, I'm telling you. This, you're like Trump Jr. You really have been a Trump you know, a lot. Seriously, this guy, uh, you read his, the history on this guy, it just makes you go reach out and want to, you know, we got to help this guy big time. Anyway, I just want to talk about something I know is dear to you, Professor Clemens. It's dear to myself. It's dear to also, uh, is um, Mr. Kennedy. We have uh, Brian Kennedy and Jenny here. Right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Stand up, please. I want to recognize these folks. You know, one of the things that we dear to us is the J6ers. You know, January 6th, 2021, yeah, give a big hand. Yeah. It really showed us what our government, what they're doing, what they're made of. It showed their true colors. You know, when we, one thing I like about the Declaration of Independence when I saw in that video, the part where it says, when any form of government becomes destructive, it's the right of the people. Yeah. And God bless you on November 5th. We're going to let our voices ring. These two individuals, for the past couple years, have rolled through the prison system and created a, a communication how to do with the J6ers. And you know, I was so impressed with this here, we went ahead and made it nationwide through all our assemblies in 30 states in Puerto Rico. So we adopted that. And I want to thank you, too, for putting the how to do uh, over the communication to emails. These patriots that are in, in prison without due process, they need a patriot pin pal. So I want to encourage you to please take one of these home today, become a patriot pin pal. They made it very simple. This is going viral across the nation. We got to make sure that these folks in prison 
or we feel loved, okay? By the way, you can either pin pal them eventually, you email, I understand, also to them, they should be able to talk to them 15 minutes, I believe it is their, their length. But anyway, I want to thank you too for putting this together. This is huge. I want to make sure that you get, you know this program. This is a great program that you put together, all the hard work, did all the heavy lifting. As we go into this election, we must stay focused. We must stay focused on mission, okay? Stay focused, turn off the, uh, the ABC, David Manure type stuff. Don't listen to that kind of garbage. Focus on the good stuff. Uh, listen to people on our side, Epoch Times, there's a lot of great uh, conservative news out there. Of course, Conservative Daily, uh, one of my faves, right there, Professor? <laughs> but also to um, stay informed, stay informed, and make sure you stay united of all things, okay? We gotta stay united. Right now, they're trying to divide us. Don't, don't get caught up in that. Don't, don't get caught up in the trap. We're gonna win this. We're going to win this with boots on the ground, and I, I feel really comfortable. Is one one big reason because we got God on our side. Okay. Amen. I'm going to close it out by saying thank you very much for coming out and be part of this here. Here we're going to make our our buddy David here feel special. So thank you. Thank you so much. Bro. I have another dear friend. Our next speaker is. Chris Jersky, founder of the People's Audit. Yeah. He's also a member of the Florida Republican Assembly. And Chris is going to share a few remarks with you. He's also going to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. David Clements. Give Chris a big hand, please. Thank you very much. I am humbled to be here, and it is such a great honor to be able to introduce uh, somebody that was a personal hero to mine, and I hope that he can be yours as well, because I feel that he should have been here a long time ago. Um, the main reason David is a personal hero of mine is I see a lot of familiar faces in the crowd today. We all fought against the masks back with the school boards. Um, I feel humbled because of all the coalition building that we have here in this room. I mean, we have the Republican Party with the Liberty Caucus, Florida Republican Assembly. Um, going back to those days when we were fighting against the school board, David was basically fighting against his university. He was probably one of the only people I remember seeing publicly standing up to a university and telling them he would not wear the mask, as well as he would not take his shots. More importantly, he told everybody in his classroom that they didn't have to wear a mask to come into his classroom. Go ahead. When I saw that, <laughs> when I saw that, I just, at my, I, I was actually fighting my private school at the time, Mount Verde. Because as we fought here for Lake County, Mount Verde Academy did not allow the mask. At the last minute, they changed their mind and made the mask basically mandatory. So after seeing him, I took on my school. I never forget the day that my youngest son, about seven years old, walked into that school by himself with no mask on. And I have to thank David. And as fate would have it, like I, I was absolutely stunned that he was such a hero on the What's saying against the vax and the mission and the and the and the mask to see him enter the election arena and I again I'm like where how does this guy do it? <laughs> he came on the scene with the uh, Lindell Sinat what's in symposium is probably the first time everybody saw him and he stood up there and basically tried to push to basically make sure that the election the stolen election was front and center. Again, this guy works probably harder than anybody I think of and every time I feel that I'm not <laughs> that I'm just doing too much. I call him up and check his schedule and I say, uh, I got more to do. Because <laughs> the amount of time and effort this man has sacrificed to be with us, away from his family, to be on the road, to do what he's done is absolutely an absolute blessing and a service. But to also hear his, his absolute faith in God is, is just humbling. Very humbling to be able to call him a friend. And I really appreciate him. I'm sure you guys will love everything he has to say because again, I think that Lake County, since I've been here, I've been so blessed to be born in, in this, or come to this town, not born here, but come to here, have Bill invite me up for the first time. I think I talked about election integrity was the first time I publicly spoke here. Meeting Lou on the same day, and then having to come here now with David doing an announcement has really been a humbling experience. So please, David, Professor David Clements. Yeah!
stuff goes to your head. <laughs> it's a dangerous place to be. Uh, you know, we, we all, uh, there's always someone that's got it worse than you. And so, well, um, I was kind of getting tearful of there is uh, such kindness, Chris, and thank you, because I see Chris, what he does. And he needed to know that the People's Audit is the, the gold standard when it comes to analyzing voter rolls. You're here. In fact, when people say prove that the machines have been subverted, there's only a handful of records that prove <coughs> that your machines have been subverted. It's the Casper records, and it's analysis like what Chris does, where we don't guess, we're not speculating, you've got proof. And um, he's featured in Let My People Go. Um, but speaking of people that have it worse, do we have anyone here that's been charged by our weaponized government that's a J6er. I ask because I, you know, we, we want to honor the J6ers. They are heroes. And um, are you sure? I mean, we don't want you to get in trouble. I know that some people have conditions of release and they don't want to. Do we have one that Well, I ask because uh, every time someone gives me cash for the J6ers, we hand it off to a J6er. And if you guys collect something today, the next stop, we're going to hand the cash to them. And this is just something that God does. It's really, really cool. So if you're just shy and bashful, come see me. It's not a ton, but at least dinner and a few bills can be paid for. Okay. And then the other thing is, as believers, we know that we are safest when we we cling to the cross. And uh, this cross right here is something that I've been clinging to. It was meant for Peter Navarro, but the prison administrators would not give him the cross. So I am holding on to it until I can give it to him myself. And uh, so we all have our, our burdens. But um, where, do we get to, where do we start? Where do we start tonight? Um, tonight, what I propose to do is uh, give you a vision, a victory, and it's real. But we've got some obstacles. So if you came here tonight and you wanted to hear technical explanations, what I can tell you is as long as the church doesn't have a hard out for us, I'll stick around as long as uh, folks will allow us and I'll answer any technical, substantive questions. But if you're here tonight, and you know who I am. I don't have to persuade you that we've got a problem with our elections. And so I want to I want to solve the problem of what do we do? What do we do now? The first issue that I see is that we've got a fracture amongst conservatives. And we've got two prescriptions being, being offered. And I'm here to tell you one of them is wrong. Okay, so prescription number one is the more popular one because you've got a lot of conservative heavyweights that are saying, chase balance, bank the vote. And um, to, to illustrate this in a way that I think is a little bit humorous, if you could pull up the J.P. Sears video, let's go ahead and give it a watch. Do you think America will exist a year from now? I don't know, but it's looking like it's coming down to the main event between Trump and Biden, and RFK Jr., and whoever they surprisingly replace Biden with. <laughs> but with so much riding on it, do you think this election will have integrity? Wait, are you suggesting that all elections aren't 100% full of integrity? No, I'm not really suggesting that. Are you an election denier? Are you an election denier denier? That question is hard for me to process, but saying an election was stolen or could be stolen should be a high crime punishable by imprisonment. A lot of people have claimed such things, such as this one. I believe he knows he's an illegitimate president. Oh, he knows. You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. 
and you can have the election stolen from you. Ah, uh, yes. It's almost as though we're made to forget that such a credible person has said such things. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying with the upcoming election being so monumental, our votes are going to be really important. I agree, so we should definitely vote early by mail-in ballots to help secure our election. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's called ballot banking. A lot of Republicans are promoting it. How does voting early by mail protect your vote? Because it puts your vote in the hands of another person for a long period of time where you get to have faith that they won't accidentally lose it, throw it away, or allow another single person to access it. Huh. And then on election day, they put it where it goes, where it will then be observed in a public way, starting at that point. Did you know that if you vote in person on election day, then you just start at that point? You don't want to do that. Because remember with Carrie Lake's election, a lot of the voting machines accidentally shut down, coincidentally in Republican areas, leading to long, frustrating voting lines. And they accidentally had the wrong size machines that couldn't read the 20-inch paper ballots. Therefore, a lot of the votes didn't even get counted. So this disenfranchised a lot of voters, leading us to believe that in-person voting on Election Day is no good. And therefore, we as Republicans need to vote early by mail. It's called ballot banking, bro. Did you ever think that? Never have. At least not my own thoughts. Did you ever think that highly accidental debacle with Kerry Lake's election might have been a ploy to get Republicans to abandon the most secure way of voting while getting them to willingly participate in a very unsecure way of voting while thinking it's the most secure way of voting? You clearly don't understand. It's called ballot banking. That sounds secure. Like, without even thinking about it, my mind automatically associates, like, Fort Knox with the word banking. And that word association makes me feel as though it's very secure without even having to think about it. Who exactly is trying to dissuade you from in-person voting to make our elections more secure? No, the RNC is doing what the DNC used to do. You know how the RNC is part of the Uniparty? <laughs> yep. And how over the years the RNC has spent plenty of time being at odds with President Trump, even though he's the people's choice? Yeah. And how you don't trust the RNC because they're an integral part of the establishment that you don't trust? Oh yeah. But you trust this initiative of theirs that seems to be built on a foundation of quicksand, where they're trying to get you to do what the Democrats were trying to get you to do in the last election? Yes, because their don't vote on election day by banking your ballots ahead of time initiative is phrased in a very convincing way, positioning the deceptive Democrats as our common enemy. Therefore, I think the RNC is on my side because I'm forgetting about the Uniparty right now. Unless, unless it's a PSYOP. But I'm pretty sure the things I fall for aren't PSYOPs. All these stupid people fall for those. Agreed. And when I fall for them, I deny that they're psyops and laugh at the term like it's a crazy made-up thing that never happens. <laughs> awesome. Plus, I sense that another disease will be coming where part of the cure is mail-in ballots, just like the last election. That one didn't work out so well. Yeah, that one didn't work out so well, but I expect the same thing done over again will garner a different result. Thus, as a good, obedient Republican, I will be participating in ballot banking by casting my vote early by mail. Well, I don't know about you, but I'll be voting in person on election day. Long lines, gonna be a hassle, gonna be worth it. Right, yeah. Thank you. So, look, that's just a reminder for folks. Look, you only get to vote once if you're honest. <laughs> and if you're gonna do it, do it in such a way that makes it very difficult for bad actors that want to use that data to subvert the will of the people. And the best way to do that is to not give in to the pretext of what happened against Kerry Lake. Um, the argument shouldn't be, vote well, early, should it? Why are we using machines where 60% of them malfunction? Like, let's, let's get rid of them. Um, but curiously, there are many people in conservative ranks that keep pushing this. And um, we get one shot to get this right. So uh, if you all, you can't, you can't persuade everyone, but if you all pledge to go through the hassle of voting in person on election day and, and be conduits for that truth, <coughs> we'll all be better off, okay? Yeah. Now, um, totally for those that want to have some substantive um, 
is debriefing on the election machines. I've got a couple videos, and I'm going to tie them to Florida, and then we're going to get to a prescription. So we got to get to work, right? Um, I mentioned the cast vote record, and it's the most vital record on showing whether you've got some machine subversion. So here's a brief clip from Dr. Walter Doherty, and uh, I think that's the next browser. And let's just watch this two minutes. When you see random unsorted mail-in ballots, which the Maricopa uh, official in charge of the election agreed that the mail-in ballots were random, there should be no discernible pattern in the sequence. And what that means is after the initial fluctuations due to a small number of ballots counted so far, you should very quickly settle down to the final average. This is why quality control works. This is why polling works. So Maricopa County has over 2 million registered voters. Someone's running for office. They do not make 2 million phone calls and say, do you mind telling me who you plan to vote for? They make 400 phone calls at random. Because if that random sample is representative of the whole county, then with 400 phone calls, they can get the percentage who are going to vote for each candidate plus or minus three or four percent. Candidate says, well, I want a more accurate poll. Okay, call a thousand people. You don't have to call two million people if the sample, because the sample is random. It doesn't matter which thousand you pick as long as there was no pattern to the way you picked it. And so when the pattern is not random, in the, this case, we saw a two to one slope that was not only not flat like it ought to be, but it was very tightly controlled. So if you count the first 25,000 ballots and Biden has 75% of them, and then you count another 25,000 ballots, so now you've counted 50,000 ballots what will his percent be? It might be higher, it might be lower. It depends on that second batch of 25,000 ballots. In other words, you could not bet on it and say, I know that if I count another 25,000 votes, it's always going to be higher. It's always going to be higher. It's always going to be higher. It's like flipping quarters and you say, well, I know it's going to be heads, 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 heads. Something's wrong with that. And that's what happened in Pima County, Arizona. So if you took blocks of 25,000 votes and then counted another 25,000 and another 25,000, the cumulative proportion went 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70. That can't happen in a fair election with unsorted mail-in ballots. Okay, so that's um, a longer cut of what's featured in Let My People Go. What you need to know is that that phenomena isn't just in Arizona. Now, uh, my wife and I have personally validated uh, 400 cast vote records in 300 counties, all showing the same phenomena. There's actually been over a thousand cast vote records, roughly a third of the counties in America, that are showing the same phenomena. I don't get that number because I can't defend stuff that I haven't validated. But um, I have strong reason to believe that it's in just about every single urban area. So where you might not see this is in rural areas that don't use high-speed tabulators, but in areas, I mean, with low-speed tabulators. But if you have a population center that's using the high-speed tabulators, we're finding that predictive linear drive towards a set point everywhere. And we found it in Florida. So this is relevant to you. It doesn't matter if you use Dominion. It doesn't matter if you use ESNS. I know that you use ESNS, right? Is that who you all use here? Yes. It's the same thing. You've got different candy wrappers, but it's the same software design that's, that's present. In fact, uh, ESNS was forced to divest many of their assets when they were sued in 2010, and they sold it to Dominion. And many of the players go from these corporate entities back and forth. Makes you, makes you wonder. But that's really not the main culprit of um, the steel. It's not the tabular. It's one of many. You actually have an integrated software 
in Florida that is so dangerous, it's VR systems. And it allows bad actors that are likely made up of the corporate vendors in your own government to basically work behind precinct and county firewalls to monitor all of your data and change it at will. Do you trust the DHS? <coughs> because they're the orchestrators of the system. Have you ever heard of the Atlantic Council? They used to do uh, political consensus build, building across um, the pond. They're basically a NATO think tank. They have basically created the architecture we use for elections in the United States. So, we're going to have one more video from uh, Mr. Jeff Lemberg, who's a dear friend of mine, he's a nation state expert, uh, to really highlight how pernicious this machine problem is and then we'll get to prescriptions. Go ahead. The, the point of distinction between Alex Howard, expert, Jeff Lemberg, expert, is that one, that being a Howardman, places a tremendous level of trust that Dominion would never have the ill intent to allow their election files to be uh, modified in a way to carry this out. You, as a vulnerability expert, would say access opportunity certainly exists. So why would you why would you rule that out? You definitely wouldn't rule it out. Their systems are their software, even according to Holderman, is so poorly done security wise. Do you think it would be hard to break into their system and put a hack in it to put this stuff into the election files? The answer is. No, it wouldn't be hard at all. So an external party could have gotten into their software to create it and, and make this, these sort of changes to occur. And it flows down to every tabulator in the country. One single set location, one point subverted, let's say in Dominion or ESNS or HARP, can flow down to every tabulator of that model of that variety or, or that vendor in the country. And by, by flowing down, you mean that, that, the, that the encrypted file, whatever is being supplied to the clerks, they are unwittingly basically putting that into their election apparatus. Absolutely. So the, the clerks are doing it, the technicians, the Dominion Technics, technicians don't need to know anything about it. The people actually doing the programming of the ballots and stuff at, at, at the voting machine company don't need to know anything about it. I've looked at their log files. I mean, they push a button and it does 200 different things for one button push. It's generate the election files. It's software doing it. That software subversion, one place, a lookup table, boom, you modify that election for those tabulators. So my point is, we saw it, our team documented in Antrim, external access to the EMS by an anonymous user, okay, with no credentials. That means they have full access to all of that software that was on. If they want to download that software, figure out how to subvert it, get back in, make changes, they can do anything they want to. All right, so a series of rapid fire questions, mostly yes or no answers. The exploit or the vulnerability that you just mentioned that you observed in Michigan um, on having things like Microsoft SQL on an EMS. Have you observed that same tool in other jurisdictions across the country? Absolutely. It was in Maricopa. I had access to those uh, hard drives there. Uh, the forensics on those, and it was on those, and it was in New Mexico. I observed it in Ontario County. And have you spoken, by the way, with no password? Absolutely. Not only was the tool on there, but it didn't even require a password to get into it. Microsoft SQL server management tool, which is not required to run this database. It should not be. And should not be on the system, but it is on the system. Okay. And by the way, it was not cert in the certification paperwork for the system either. Uncertified. Can votes be switched, flipped, or shifted? Is there a way to do that without internet accessibility? Absolutely. Okay. And then, of course, I think this goes without saying it can be achieved with internet accessibility. Absolutely. Okay. So there are circumstances that you have ordained 
where a tabulator could be locked behind a door, could even be under armed guard, never hooked to the internet. And with enough planning, with an access point, something can occur that triggers this device to do something that it shouldn't be doing. You never have to visit the state that it's in. In fact, you wouldn't even have to be in the country to have done it. One of the big problems that people have is they see all the different vendors and then they hope with bated breath, well, do we use Dominion? Or do we use the SNS? Do you use VR systems? Or do you use SCORE? Or do you use uh, Tolvo? It's all there to confuse you. The software design is essentially the same down to the tabulator, down to um, you know the integration that we see in every state. It's so elegant. And so what Mr. Lemberg is, is trying to convey here is that one or two people can design this version so upstream that your clerks are effectively loading the murder weapon and they wouldn't know it. So a lot of these files, whether they're encrypted or not, are being sent. So people are basically offloading the files and they start generating what they're going to put on your tabulators. If you do this upstream, the subversion is done before it hits the tabulator. And what happens with the tabulator? You've got election workers that will retrieve the data off that tabulator with USB sticks and upload it into their internet connected uh, management system. By the time you get there, the cheats already happen long time ago. So that's probably the most elegant way to subvert these systems. But the point is this, no matter where you are in the process, early voting, day of, after, there's an access point for the deep state to make adjustments. So this is not about shoe leather. This is not about let's out hustle the Democrats and scour waste baskets at a college dorm room or go to the nursing home. And somehow if we collect those ballots better than the Democrats, we win. You're up against the high speed printer. You're against a stroke of a key. You're up against software. This is the challenge. I need you to know that what's left of your voice is still worth fighting for. And so we're going to have to have, have to have right messaging. We need to improve the terrain to get rid of defective processes and machinery where we can, knowing that we're not going to solve the entire problem before November. So when I tell you it makes sense to vote on Election Day, this is what I'm talking about. You're depriving bad people of their metrics. You're depriving mules of information that assist them in going to certain places and stuffing that ballot box. Right. They basically have a blindfold on if you wait. But if you show up three weeks early, they are accounting for so many different variables that it's very easy for them to deploy the programming to set those <coughs> algorithms into place to have that linear drive go down. Okay, so if this is stuff that's, you know, maybe you're hearing for the first time, Watch Let My People Go. It's free. Find it on Rumble. About 100 plus influencers have uploaded it and get your education. But uh, I'm here to, to give you a prescription. So here we go. Ready? All right. So you want to save your country. Two things have to happen human agency and submitting to the power of God. Letting his authority, his supernatural authority, work through you. And it's got to be both. In other words, many people here are prayer warriors. And that's fine. And usually the prayer warrior will pray for others to move. But rarely do their prayers motivate them to move. That's a problem. Or we have patriots that are brave and courageous and they go to places and they, they, they do a form of advocacy but they don't go to these places with a feeling from the Holy Spirit. Meaning they don't have all of the ammunition that they need. And that's a problem. We need to have both working in tandem. We got our phones off. 
<laughs> um, so what I'm here to tell you is I'm not going to tell you that, man, if, if we just keep talking about these different piles of fraud, something will eventually break through. I'm not here to tell you that. I'm not here to tell you that if you convince your rhino legislature in Florida and get them on the same page and they pass a bunch of laws, you're going to solve this. This system architecture doesn't care about the code that was written by the vendors. Your legislature did not write Florida's election code. Special, special interest groups did. They find sponsors that they wine and dine, they introduce that legislation, and that's why your code is manufactured in a way that does not give you accountability. So I'm not going to tell you to do that. <coughs> Number two, I'm not going to tell you to, to stress out about a magic lawsuit with the right, correct legal remedy. Because it's going to go before an unaccountable judge who's going to strike it down for lack of standing, just like 400 other lawsuits. <coughs> so if I'm not here to tell you to pursue either of those paths, what am I here for? You're going to have to take this back in a super hyper local way where you scale your superpower, which is your numbers. Now, many of you have gone to your local county meetings. But chances are it's the same tired 10 people that do all the work. They show up and they're worn out. And they've been keeping this fight together with people like Chris Gersky and many others. And they're holding the entire movement together with duct tape and bubble gum, waiting for help. And there's a reason why you don't show up to these meetings. Because you've seen the videos where you're, you're effectively treated like garbage. How much time do they give you to talk at your county? Three minutes. Three minutes. Now, I just showed you very, very short clips. Do you think that we could articulate the scope of our problem in three minutes? Well, that's by design. So we're going to do a magic trick tonight. And we're going to get your training started. Um, I need two volunteers to stand up here with me. Yes, sir, over there. Lou? Oh. I shouldn't have said magic trick, this yeah, yeah. who's a real magician. Uh, that was just hyperbole on, on my part. Okay, and I need um, one gentleman, how about the gentleman with the cowboy hat back there? Could you just stand right by the, the, the corner of that uh, AV station? Just stand right there. Now we're going to back up a little bit, and I'm going to turn this around. And I need one more volunteer to stand right here, particularly someone that really hates our election machines. Oh, that's me. <laughs> okay, and what, what county are we presently in? Lake County. And where are we in Lake County right now? Claremont. Claremont, and we're in a church? Okay, so close your eyes. This will only work if you close your eyes. And when you reopen your eyes, you will be magically transported to a Lake County Board Supervisor meeting. Open them. Welcome. I am a Lake County, is it Commissioner Supervisors? Commissioner. I am a Lake County Board Supervisor. I'm joined by Lou, who's also a Lake County Board Supervisor. And your name? Alex. Alex is also a Lake County Board Supervisor. Do you have three or five in Lake County? Five. Uh, well, we knew that. Two are on Zoom with their screen off. And they're not paying attention. The gentleman standing up there with the cowboy hat is a sheriff's deputy that will staff our Lake County Board Supervisor meeting to make sure that we keep the order because we are not animals. We are a nation of laws and we want to make sure that we get through this meeting very, very efficiently. And man, it's public comment uh, time. You're afforded three minutes. We're going to pretend that you've already exhausted two minutes. You've got a minute to make your case and go. Machines have to go. We can't trust them. Give, give her the mic. <laughs> we, we work hard for gold. We, have a we still want for golf later. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that they duplicate, they cheat. Yeah. They cheat I, I got this. 
wild kitten video. It's crazy. But I'm going to show you that. Ma'am, uh, we need you to bring it to a close. Your time is up. Uh, Ma'am, I don't appreciate the hostility. And I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe with... with and, and we have rules for a reason. And so we're, we're going to ask you to, to, to take a seat. Because your time is up, Sally. Please, please, please sit down. We'd like to hear from the other members of the public. Your, your three minutes is up. Okay, pause. Okay, this is a test. What I'm testing is I'm looking to see how Sally handles what many of you will handle and encounter if you go to these meetings. Are her concerns valid? Yes. Let me ask you this. In Lake County, have you all tried to get on the agenda election integrity? Yes, you have. And have you been successful getting it on the agenda with experts that are independent of ESNS or VR systems? No. And I've been to 47 states. It's the same answer no matter where I go. If you get it on the session, they basically bring up Dominion or ESNS, and they will gaslight you and tell you that everything's fine. So you, you failed the test because you listened to us. So I want you to come back, Sally and continue sharing your concerns. Go. Ma'am, I thought I told you that you're out of time. I'm going to ask you to sit down, or I'm going to have to have our sheriff's deputy remove you. Please sit down. We're not done talking. Sir, we've got a listless vessel here. <laughs> Us, sir. Yeah, we, I don't feel safe. <laughs> okay, and pause. Pause, pause, pause. Okay, so now I'm not testing Sally. I'm testing you all. And I could have swore I magically transported, a magician standing next to me can vouch for this, magically transported you to a Lake County Board Supervisor meeting. And you're about to watch this man take away a constituent that's bringing a valid concern to the board of supervisors. We're just watching. So now we're going to rewind, go back to the station, sir, <laughs> and we're going to try something different. Everyone here, stand up except for our deputy. Stand up. Everyone, come forward and pack this well alongside Sally. Come forward. Come forward. Come forward. As close as you can get. You want mine? Come around. Come around. As close as you can get. And so Why I, why I came here was, did you notice how the power shifted as soon as he stood? We just diminished and got a whole lot smaller. And Sally is now a giant because she is not by herself. She is with you all. And also look at the wall you've just created between Sally and the deputy. Do <laughs> you think he's interested in showing up and... Folks, what, what I'm trying to get across to you is that you've got so many obstacles. If they're only giving you three minutes to talk and you listen, what prayer do you have to get rid of the machines if you can't even take back your time? They set the playing board in such a way that you have been neutered. You can't articulate what you need to articulate. They won't put it on the agenda for a full explanation. And it leads to this. So this is the beginnings of your very own Lake County Gideon 300 tonight. Because if this group shows up to your board supervisor meetings together, 
everything changes. In other words, we don't even have to put Sally out there by herself. You all can agree tonight that you can go to the next meeting, have a representative, and be fair, and show up and say, for four years, we've been trying to get this national security crisis before you, known as our elections, and you won't. You won't set up a session. Now, imagine this group together while this person is saying this. In the next 48 hours, we expect you to put it on the agenda, and we will bring the experts to inform you of your maladministration and the problems with the system. Put the mic down. Leave. It's the ultimate mic drop. That's your first assignment. And you're going to look for them to see if they're going to do this. Chances are they won't. But what you've done is given them an opportunity to make it right through a special session. And if they don't put it on the special session, they are in defiance of, of their public trust to you, their constituents, which gives you the opportunity to come back to the next public comment section and take back your time. Now, everything I'm going to tell you tonight is completely lawful. First of all, you all have the right, under the Bill of Rights, First Amendment to do what? <laughs> to gather, to peacefully assemble. This is not time for you to lose your minds. This is for you to gather peacefully. That's what you're doing. There's no law in Florida yet that says you can't stand together at these county meetings. Now, they might make something up, but right now there's none. Number two, there's no statute on the books in any county that says thou shalt have three minutes to talk. It's completely arbitrary, and it's at our discretion. Meaning you can show up and say, no, 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 no. The three minutes is going out the window. Sometimes they actually leave. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to talk about that. So this is a tool. So I want you to picture this right now. This is your light bulb moment. And just like Jesus sent out the 12 and then the 70, I'm going to go to all 50 states a second time. But I can't go to 3,147 counties. There are enough people here that can go to adjacent counties, put on a screen of let my people go, to create the urgency, because you're not going to show up in these meetings if, you're not, if you don't know the problem. And then there's going to be a credit roll of all the J6 prisoners. You stand for them, you honor them. And as soon as they're done, whoever you designate is going to show up and say, I need two volunteers. Stand up here. I need one person to stand back there and, and be our deputy and one person to stand here. That's it. That's the training. And you will give everyone else their light bulb moment to create a Gideon army in every county. So we're going to take this home. But go ahead and sit down. But uh, we're going to give you the tools right now. Now we're gonna we're gonna tell you all of the obstacles that you're going to encounter. And we're gonna give you your legal demands that you need to make at these. I'm gonna, I'll do question and answer afterwards, I promise. Okay, what I'm done. What I'm done, please. I've got I, I, I promise to stick around for for Q&A. So write down your questions if you have. Okay, so, what demands are you going to make that are lawful? Well, you can't just go in there and ask people to do things they can't do. So your election administrator does not get, does not have the legal authority to say, I'm just getting rid of the SMS. They don't have the legal authority. So you can shout at them and gather all day long. It's not going to help you or them. What does your clerk or election administrator have the legal authority to do that no one else in the state of Florida has? Those little black boxes, those tabulators, yes and yes, dominion doesn't matter. They are pulled out about 42 days before an election. It's called a logic and accuracy test. And each of those black boxes before they're sent out and used are certified. Meaning there's a piece of paper, a form, that they sign off on and they say, this machine is trustworthy. 
Your SOS doesn't do that. Ron DeSantis doesn't do that. No one but the election administrator has the legal authority to sign off and certify those machines for use. What would happen if 300, 500 showed up and said, you better not certify to that machine until you hear what we've got to say? Whether it's a show up with a film, these experts, they have no business signing off on the defective product. Number two, you have a canvassing board in every county. Usually it's your board of supervisors and maybe there might be a couple of appointees. It's a little bit different in every state, but it's essentially the same. Judge. These are the people. You might have an election judge too. We have an actual judge on it. You've got a judge, but it's a combination. The way that it works is at the end of an election, your election administrator slash clerk shows up and says, oh, wow. Wow. We did a great job. Remind me of your name because you're a volunteer. Rosemary. Rosemary. Rosemary was handing out those I voted stickers. How many I voted <laughs> stickers did you hand out, Rosemary? 712. 712. Wow. Let's give Rosemary a hand. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we, we have another volunteer. Remind me of your name, man. Susan. Susan. You were handing out those those black felt tip markers. <laughs> which makes it so easy to fill out the ballot, unlike those ballpoint pens we got rid of. How many of those felt tip markers did you hand out? About 520. About 520. Let's give, let's give. Photo <laughs> turnout was just was amazing. It was so great. So that's our report. Um, that's our canvas. Photo <laughs> turnout was great. We hand out pens and stickers. Um, but at this time, canvassing, we, we need to take up a vote to certify the election results here in Lake County. And what do they do? They call it the vote. And your five board supervisors may be a judge, but it's, it's done locally at the county level. Mm -hmm. And they will take either a yes or no vote to certify what happens here locally. What happens? If you show up continuing to explain to them the defective processes, the machines, it's discretionary. They've got the option to say, you know something, I can't say yes based on what I know. But you have to give them the courage, the strength, or perhaps the fear to do the right thing by showing up. And if it's the same three people, they will never get the memo. In fact, if you brought me, someone who has more answers than most, or Chris Kirsty, or Mark, who know their stuff, they will look at them and me with contempt. Because it's not about good faith discussions. It's not about being reasonable. This is about someone who is ideologically possessed, or there's a spirit of power that's moving through them, where they don't want to lose what they have. And what you bring to their attention they don't like, they don't want. They've got a good gig. So they've designed these meetings with time limits to do what? To keep you quiet. And to give them plausible deniability to be willfully ignorant about the system. Now, isn't it curious that I know more about your systems than the person that actually certifies the machines? and certifies your vote. Isn't that, isn't that backwards? I mean, I, why is that? So that's a lawful demand. Both of them, from the First Amendment to what you're demanding. They have the discretion to say, you know something, we're going to press pause. And no one's going to make me sign off on this process. Now, where we lose is when you show up to these meetings, Sally was very, very polite, which is, which is appreciated. You don't have to be mean or a jerk. We go in and we start petitioning. We beg for public records. We beg for more time. And if you've done that or you're doing that, you've already lost. You've lost before you've even walked in the room. So how many here are familiar with Matthew Trello? He wrote the book, The Doctrine of the Lesser Magistrates. Amazing book. And the premise is quite simple. You've got a totem pole. 
Governor DeSantis would be at the top. He's the chief executive of Florida. SOS, Attorney General, these would all be considered greater magistrates. And the lesser magistrate would be the dog catcher, the election administrator, your board supervisors, um, people that are lower on the total, maybe the sheriffs. <clears throat> and what happens from time to time is that there needs to be an action from the lesser magistrate to stand between victims of bad law and stand up to the greater magistrate in a place of interposition. And we've seen this throughout history and even in modern day times in Illinois. A radical left legislature that was selected started passing laws that took away the people of Illinois, their gun rights. And you had a bunch of sheriffs in their respective counties that said, go pound sand. We're not going to enforce the law. If you send state troopers here, we will arrest them. They interposed as lesser magistrates knowing that the higher law, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, they had an independent duty to defend it. That's interposition. Where I depart from Matthew Truell is that I don't believe that there is a distinction between DeSantis and your sheriff. In other words, there was a time where your sheriff and DeSantis both had zero political power. And where they acquired that power was through an election. They derived their power from you, which makes you the greater magistrate. If you are a greater magistrate, you never go to these meetings and petition someone that is lesser than you. And that's exactly what we do. You petition God Almighty and everyone else, you start doing something different. You declare. You proclaim. You don't bluff. And I'm not saying you won't be nervous when you go to these meetings. Of course you will. Because the law for the longest time has had a monopoly on this thing called force. So bear with me. Many of you here today are still waiting for the version of a plan that carries with it zero risk. <clears throat> and I'm here to tell you that plan does not exist. Number two, you're waiting for the version of the plan that gives you a 100% guarantee of success. That plan does not exist. It does not exist. Navarro is in jail. Bannon is returning himself in on the 1st to jail. Trump will be sentenced next month. Thomas Casper, a guy that used to drive around Virginia about a month ago, he and his bride at 6 or 4 a.m. had the door kicked and they were taken. Oh. Stephanie Lambert, an attorney defending Matt Capurno, Michigan, who gave access to our experts to look at those machines, like Mr. Lambert, was arrested in a courtroom in Washington, D.C. and later strip searched. How many of us have to be picked off one by one until you all do what you did this evening? Simply standing together consistent with your First Amendment rights to inform and expose maladministration until something happens. Well, the question is, has anything happened? Yes. 28 election administrators in California in the last four years have resigned because of the pressure of this campaign. 15 percent in Wasilla, Alaska, no longer use Dominion. The city of Milton does not use Dominion. Two counties in Nevada do not use ESNS. Claiborne County, until a legislator, a Republican, betrayed the role of the people, you had not only had them moving away from Dominion in that county, you had a district judge affirming that. Wherever we have victories, it's as simple as people showing up in numbers. And you've seen the successes in certain places. It's usually a bunch of pissed off moms. <laughs> and wherever the pissed off moms gather, because they're worried about their kids, guess what happens? Every time, the local boards relent. But they only relent when we show up. So what you're creating is this thing I call the Jacob Marley effect. For all of you Dickens lovers. The Christmas Carol, yeah. what happens? Was Scrooge a good guy? Yeah. He was a lot like your board supervisors. <laughs> but something happened. He started hearing rattling chains. He was confronted. 
And there's only two things that will get the attention of your clerks, your administrators, your, your supervisors. It's either revelation, where Jesus shows up <coughs> and says, see, or the people have to show up and they go, oh, shit. <laughs> Excuse my French, I forget that sometimes I'm in the house of the Lord. But that's, that's what's happening. And what you're doing is an exposure campaign. You don't get to just magically get rid of the machines until you expose the corruption. So, a couple practical suggestions. I told you what you can say. You've got experts that can show up and give agency on the technical matters and bring them to your meetings. But this is about courage. It's, it's just about courage. So that's human agency. How many here have a blog or a website? Raise your hand. Got one here, got one back there. How many else? Back there? I see seven or eight hands raised. What would happen if you change your blog to a news website? And it, the more benign, the better. Lake County News. Do you know the utility of, of doing that? You show up like you did with these numbers. You've got your eight citizen journalists reporting Clipping. In fact, they record these meetings for you because the law requires them to live stream. Right. Clip them up, write up your articles, convert your websites to something news, and start exposing the maladministration, putting them on notice. Because I'll tell you right now, as much as I'd like for all of you to show up, and I hope to prove me wrong, 10% will actually move and go to the place where none of us want to go. But if it's just 10, the beautiful thing is we have our citizen reporters record, writing up the articles. The supervisor goes home and says, honey, you would not believe what happened. Today, 300 people showed up in the well around this salad girl. <laughs> they told us if we don't put out a special session in 48 hours, they're going to be back, and they're going to have twice the people. And then they walked out. I don't know what to do. I've never seen anything like it. And she goes, well, it's way worse than that, because someone recorded that. And it's gone viral. And you look like you wet yourself. <laughs> and so it wasn't just the 300 of them that saw it. It's now 10,000. And then it was picked up by the Gateway Pundit, and it was seen by hundreds of thousands, and you are the laughing stock of Lake County. I know this works because there's a new site in New Mexico called the Estancia News, and they do the hardest hitting reporting. They've exposed more corrupt politicians, more corrupt voting systems than anywhere else. Estancia News is feared by the Republican establishment, Democrats alike. Now, I can either confirm or deny that my wife might be an editor. <laughs> I can't tell you. I went away or the other. I can't tell you whether I or you know whether I've those written articles. I can't tell you that. I don't know. But the point is, we're citing the news, and then 300 people repost those articles wherever you're at. But you're citing the news. You are the news, instead of Chuck's barbecue blog, who happens to dabble a little bit with elections. It's not the same. So what I'm here to do is remove excuses. Many of you are going, oh, we're not going to get a, share, a fair shake from the press. Duh. So you have to become the press. Right. That's a practical solution. We don't have lawyers. They're scared. They don't want to be disbarred. They don't want to be terminated. Duh. That's why you show up and make the demands that are lawful and legal. These are just practical suggestions on how to get back to your time to take back the meeting. And if you show up, you will get your meeting back. So that's human agency. So I'm going to end tonight with God's sovereign power. Because it's got to be both. Because some of these tyrants will do what? Luke said, we'll just walk out the back door. You're right. 
If I can't contend with you, I'm going to go out the back door. I'm going to get the deputy to escort me to my car. I'm going to call up the state news press. I'm going to do a write-up, and I'm going to start passing legislation to make what you just did illegal. How do I know that? That's what's going on across the country. Oh, it's simple. Okay. Do you have Gideon, Gideon 300, a contingency plan? Do you have a roster? In other words, you have numbers that are willing to be there when they recall the meeting, having a scout. They're coming back into the chambers. Get everyone back here, quick. Have you thought that through? Maybe they break for the day. Maybe they're so shook up that they have to republish it and you come back then. The point is it can't be 10. So if you've got an FRA membership, how many people in the state of Florida in FRA? Close to 10,000. 10,000. Can we find 300 out of 10,000? Really yes, you can. Do we have any federated Republican women? You have rosters. You got, you got numbers. Do we have any people from the Birch Society? You got numbers. You got a Tea Party that's still hanging around. Yeah. You got numbers. Do you have honest central committee members that exist in your Republican Party? You probably do. You've got rosters that you need to build. See, we are substantive people. And we keep thinking, I know what I'll do. I'll just keep thinking about the problem. I'll think about my, how to better understand the fraud. And until you do the, the boorish work of scaling your numbers, none of it matters. The numbers and you showing up are more important than having me or anyone else show up to these meetings and give facts. But if you do, something great will happen. So let's talk about the ultimate, ultimate weapon that you have. In 1863, many of you are aware that Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. He proclaimed freedom when people were still in bondage, in chains. He proclaimed it nonetheless. Just like this country was founded not on a petition for independence, but what? A declaration of. A defiant declaration of independence. When you come to these meetings, you declare it, you proclaim it, even if it's not your reality. But take your fear, take your stench of fear, and, and take it someplace else. Because this is for the Gideon 300. This is for the warriors. So if you're worried about picking up your daughter from daycare, this ain't for you. This is for the retired law enforcement. This is for the retired veterans. This is for the people that have talked themselves out of advocacy because they have reached Social Security age saying, I'm too old for this. And in fact, you brag about how you're not on social media. And I'm sitting there going, well, thank you for nothing. Because the war is out there with ideas and words, and we need you. You give us your wisdom. We need you to, to remind people about how great this country was. That's what the Gideon 300 is. It's people that have counted the cost, that are ready to do what our founders did, which was what? Pledge our lives, liberty, fortunes, reputations. I'm paraphrasing poorly. But that's the only difference between the founders and you, is that when they pledged it, they meant it. And when we talk about it, we put on bumper stickers and we pretend to be patriots. They meant it. In other words, your grandfather, if they showed up to this meeting like Sally did, there's no way in hell a board supervisor would treat your grandfather the way that we distributed her. Because he was different. He was different. There's something about the Great Depression era. Children that are just different. They spoke plainly. <coughs> they spoke plainly. Simply. But they meant what they said. And the public servants knew that they would have a fight on their hands if they defied and treated the public like the way that we're treated now. Yeah. The only difference is that the founders meant what they said. And we've got people playing patriot. Got to be about it. So back to the proclamation. Four months later, another proclamation came out that no one, no one knows about. And Lincoln saw countrymen killing one another. He did not have answers, folks. We take it for granted. And he called for a National Day of Repentance. 
curious. Does that not resonate with you? Or does that just go over your head? You understand the power of a national proclamation for repentance. It worked. About a year later, you had a miraculous vote that abolished slavery. People that, it makes no sense, historically, look at the character and the actions of many people south of the Mason-Dixon line. Votes were aligned in such a way that slavery was ended in the last civil war. Well, now we are in a modern-day civil war. That's invisible. We are all slaves tied to these machines. Yeah. Running into the same problems going before our slave masters who have set up their systems to keep you silent, neutralized, marginalized. Yeah. It worked for Lincoln. Another evidence. It worked for the founding of this country. The appeal to heaven flag was our first flag. Yeah. Things changed. More recently, in 1989, Pastor Ion Peya, who suffered under communism in Romania, about a year ago came to my house. He knew I was down because even I needed a you know, pick-me-up talk. And he said, David, I was there in Romania when the public square was surrounded by soldiers, armored vehicles, and I was there when communism fell in one day. How did that happen? So the vision, God occupies the throne. He's on the throne. Believe it. Believe that. And he's got a condition that's set forth in 2 Chronicles 7.14. It's a covenantal condition. If you will do what? Humble yourself. Turn from your wicked ways. Then I will do what? It's conditional. It's a conditional promise. I will heal your land. I will bless the land. Lincoln somehow got it. Nothing's going well. Let's try this out. And then it worked. Romania got it. And so what happens when you meet God's conditions? Because we are a covenant nation. I know that there's a lot of theologians that want to dispute it. God said to Israel, I will be your God. You will be my people. And on the shores of America, pilgrims came here. Mayflower Compact, a covenant, said, we will be your people. God, please bless the land. Make covenant with us. And as soon as that happened, 2 Chronicles 7.14 was triggered. We are breakers of that covenant. So I pray every day that Trump, the legitimate leader of this country, as a covenant figure, I'm actually hoping he does this at the RNC convention. And the reason why I hope for this is that Independence Day is the 4th. If you actually look at the number of days between the 4th and the last day of the convention, it's exactly the same number of days as January 6th and the false inauguration of Biden. Trump would be cloaked as the nominee with authority in the natural, he already has authority in the spiritual to read a proclamation. Do you know what would happen if he did that? Hopefully the cell phones won't go off when he doesn't. It will force God to stand up from the throne and walk over to the courtroom of heaven. And he will take the judgment seat you have gavel in hand. It comes down. And when it comes down, this is what happens. But I've got two questions for you. Why is it that you see clearly? Why are you here tonight when your brother-in-law at Thanksgiving exactly. tells you Trump deserves to be in jail? Right. Oh my God, awesome. Is it because you're smarter? Is it because you got a PhD? Why is it that some of you see and others don't? Holy Spirit revelation. For whatever reason, God whispered to you in a small, still voice, and you saw and heard things that no one else could see or hear. Wow. It was a gift. It wasn't because you're better than anyone. 
He's raising you up to be the Gideon 300 and to be shepherds of the sheep that is about to awaken. And when that gavel comes down, what you get is spiritual revelation to millions upon millions that all of a sudden can see and say, my God, what have I done treating Sally the way that I did? Lord, forgive me. If you're a doctor, my God, what have I done in getting a jab to that athlete that died of a heart attack? Please forgive me. That's what happened during the Civil War. That's what happened in Romania. That's what happened in Japan. One of the, the, the leaders just said, we're sorry about the jab. We were wrong. So everything that you've been laboring for, to create this moment of spiritual revelation, when you confront the leaders and put them on notice of the maladministration, it is not for nothing. It is not a fruitless exercise. You're vindicating God's justice in that moment when, Lord, Lord willing, we have our own version of the Nuremberg trial going forward. So recap. Human agency. The answer is the body of Christ, the hands, the feet. We've got a head. But Christ is not going to walk into these chambers. It's got to be his body. Amen. And two, when you walk in there, you've got to have authority. Real authority. The kind of authority that conquers spiritual strongholds. That can stomp on the demon. Stomp on the devil. And if you're going in there and you don't have the words of eternal life, if you don't have the gospel, you're powerless. That's when you're going to lose your courage. So I'll end with this. Why are you afraid? It's because you have forgotten who you are as believers. You have forgotten that you are the body. You have forgotten that you have real power, real authority. So when I go to these meetings, I don't, I don't fear these tyrants. And I've been physically removed from these meetings. <laughs> and I think of it as practice. It's great. It's like the COVID days. Sir, put on a mask. I'm at Walmart. Put on a mask. I play tag. you got to catch me. <laughs> you should be free but freedom starts right here between the ears and if you're not living free up here declaring, proclaiming you've lost I can't tell you mechanically how this is all going to work but I'm going to tell you right now it's going to be the culmination of millions of believers around the world that are being moved by the Holy Spirit Amen. and God is arranging the pieces Amen. to defeat Amen. Satan Amen. God's conditions are not optional. So tonight, please pray. Pray that Trump, as the person who's been given this anointing, whether, whether he carries out perfectly or not, will do what a national leader should do, which is meet God's conditions. I will not stop fighting. I will not stop traveling. But if there's one thing that I pray for more than anything, I've got three small children. I live out of a shoebox. God has met our needs. I don't have a job. The fashion compliments that I got from Pastor Van God. <laughs> he saw the film. He saw that same red maroon jacket that I wore everywhere. I tore a hole in it, setting up tables for Mike Lindell. Someone sent this to me in the mail. <laughs> and I wear it every day. <laughs> He's meeting my needs, but I know it's not going to be monetary compensation. It's not going to be restored to a job that will release me from this burden. It's going to be the call for repentance. When that happens, you may never see me again, and it will be the happiest day of my life. I want to go be with my kids and my wife, and they're barely hanging on, guys. It's, it's real. The most intense, intense fights you can imagine. So pray for that tonight, please. It doesn't cost you anything but a little humility. Bend the knee. Ask Papa. Please. Please. Speak. Send Gabriel for crying out loud. Send him to Trump right now and have him come forth and do something that's so out of character. We're not ripping Judge Bershon. We're not being bombastic. We're going to basically re-read re what Lincoln already wrote and just change a few phrases. 
and the benefits will be so powerful. Now when you get rid of the machines, your getting 300 army will convert into ballot counters. Mm -hmm. yes. You have the numbers here to count yeah. all your precincts right now. And once you've done that, and you've established something firm and solid, you won't treat these, these local meetings like death sentences. You'll treat them as the blessing that they are intended to be, which is, you are we the people. You show up and you govern your county. And then there's no more porn on your schools. There's no more defective machines. There's no more cannabis operations being set up in residential areas. You have ownership. I'm not doing this because of Trump. I want more than four years. I want generational foundations laid for my children, for your children, our grandchildren. Amen. So the antidote of fear is this, and it's simple. We know the answers. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. You've got many nominal believers. Maybe you're baptized. Maybe your faith is real. But there's two baptisms. There's one by water and a profession of faith, and you're going to go to heaven if it's sincere. But the one that compels you to move, where you have no choice but to move, is the baptism by the Holy Spirit. And that's the difference in the church right now. You've got a lot of people sitting in their seats doing nothing but waiting. And God does not want inaccurate weights and measures. He does not want divers weights. He does not want the hell that we're going through. So let the Holy Spirit in move you. And you will be victorious. That's the vision. That's why I'm here tonight. And just, uh, if I could, I'm going to pray for all of you. Extend a blessing. And, and then we'll uh, hang around for questions. I know I've gone over, but um, here we are. Okay, now you guys, please. Dear Lord, we thank you for your son. We thank you for Lord Jesus. And we welcome you, Lord Jesus, back to Florida, where you've been evicted at the county level, at the school, at the courthouse. Lord, we welcome you back. Give us faith. Give us courage to evict what is evil with the authority that you've given us. We pray for encouragement that is so supernatural that it's overwhelming. We pray for a pouring out of the Spirit in every individual here until it runs over. Lord, we pray that we would have victory in November, but we also pray that we have victory tomorrow and the day after. We pray for our J6 brothers and sisters, the hostages. We pray for pardons. We pray for commutation of sentences. We pray for revelation. And so, Lord, pour your blessing out, please, in the name of Jesus, on this group congregated here tonight, that this would be your Gideon army in Lake County, serving you and you alone for your glory and your glory alone. We ask this in your name. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Now. 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 Yes. Hi. Hi. I appreciate you coming and I appreciate your. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm surprised it's really everybody can hear me. I work for the supervisor of elections. Okay? And I work at the ballots. I see everything that's going on. I don't go for my own, but to see what's happening because I am concerned. Yes, I am concerned. I have never seen our supervisor election just not take questions, and his office is always open. And we actually watch those ballots. And yes, I do mail in my ballot, but I don't mail it. I hand it to them, okay, because we're not allowed to leave the precinct. So I know there's a lot of evil going on, but please, locally, know our supervisor of election 
And why was he being planted here? Well, uh, he was. In fact, I've got confirmation that he was. So um, it's not that I, I don't agree with you. It's that, in fact, I know I don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. I know I don't agree with you. And here's why. It's been four years where 80% of your elected supervisor constituents feel the same way as everyone here, and they don't have an abiding conviction one way or the other. Why is he here? Why hasn't he put it on the agenda? Why hasn't he let the people talk for more than three minutes? Why hasn't he shown those ballots? We have gone to him. We want the ballots. We've been there many times. It's on video. With the road. So this is real. What you saw on those, 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 those videos applies to Florida, it applies to Lake County, it applies to VR systems, it applies to ES and S, and damnable shame on anyone that would force these defective products and processes on you, the people. Yes. And if I need to tell him, I'll set aside tomorrow. I'll go to his office and tell him to his face. So let's set it up. Yes, All right, I'll be waiting. I well, guarantee you. And I appreciate your comment. I'm not going to ask you a question. I do want to say something. Uh, Lou, you got the flyers for J6 committee stuff. Uh, I'll, I will, Jenny and I, we will hang around afterwards. If anybody's got questions about how to set up the January 6th committee uh, in their chapters or in their clubs, we'll be glad to help work with you any way we can. Uh, we are blessed uh, to have a really good committee of people, and uh, they're very really generous. Uh, these folks, we, did, we talked to one of the prisoners today, so uh, please talk to us, we'll help you any way we can, because we want to help these folks every day. Any uh, J6ers that found the courage here? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it to the next meeting. Yes, ma'am, question. Should people go with you if that meeting is Yeah. Uh, I, I think I've got the whole day scheduled for free, so I'd be happy to find out what it is. Well, He'll, he'll put on his channel. I'll what what on. channel? The people's on. On where? Look, look, I, I, look, I've been to so many states and I've heard this dog and pony show so much. If you can't tell, like I'm getting irritated because I know it's bull. It's such bull. Indoctrination. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, my name's Don Kerr, and uh, I've been involved in this with Chris since the beginning. My personal registration, or my personal voter registration, was stolen in Lake County, which I discovered in a meeting with Alan Hayes in his office yep. when I said, I want to see my voter registration, and I've been trying to come in over the Internet, and I can't find it. He said, well, you should be able to. We went into another room. He asked somebody to come in over the Internet and find Don's registration didn't work. So he said, well, come use the internal system and find it. Yep. Yeah, there it was. He brought it up. Geez, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Republican. I vote right there at the supervisor of the elections office. And I looked at the form. I said, Alan, I got a problem. What's that, Don? My middle name isn't Mark. That's not my handwriting, and that's not my signature at the bottom. Yep. Okay. They also stole my wife's registration. We also found out we, we were involved in helping get Eric out of the state. We've been living here for 10 years. We were still registered in Arizona to vote. I personally was a poll watcher at my local uh, precinct, uh, and it's a small precinct. We had one machine. So after these systems were fully tested and great, that machine broke down three times in the first two hours of 2016, and they finally came in and removed the machine and put a different one in place. These things are garbage. Now, the last thing I'm gonna say is, he, he's right on the target, and I will tell you, we, we have done a version of what you're talking about in Lake County at the uh, at the Tiberi City Hall. So we had a, some people who wanna build a horrible, uh, you know, horrible building, and we got a whole bunch of people together, and they have we have a state law that's three minutes, and they use that to, to silence us at that meeting. What I did was I got 42 people to come to that meeting, and they all signed a little document for me that said, I want to speak too. So they signed out their speaker's form so they could all speak, and they said, but I'm yielding my time to God. 
And by doing that, I worked with a couple of the city council members, including the mayor. They gave me about 15 minutes, and we beat this thing. So it works. That's good. So you've got a personal example that immediately rebutted what was just said. Number one. Number two, if you want to slice up your time, it's fine, but there's still a psychological deficiency. Whether or not your law says something, one, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, is a superior law, but we don't treat it that way. Number two, your code is worthless as soon as you have defective processes that facilitate fraud. Any lawyer who will apply this common law prescription to run elections knows this. So let's say that I want to buy a home from you, you want to sell me a home. You draw a real estate contract, eight pages, really simple. And while you're not looking on page eight, I replace it with something that looks almost just like it, but all of a sudden the terms are a little bit more favorable to me. If you catch me, that's called fraud in the execution. So let's say that I, you know, you didn't, you didn't confront me yet, but you're going, that charlatan, that bamboozling ex-professor, how dare you? But then you also say, you know something, this is worse than it was, but I really want to move. So I'm going to enforce this contract. I'm going to bring it for the judge. Judge cannot re rehabilitate that contract. It is dead. It is null and void because what I did, the law, the law will not support it. Now think of that context in your elections. Defective products, processes, defective products, and you're being told you have to, have to follow the law. You're dealing with the spirit of legalism where the law itself is the end. But the whole point of the law is to protect your vote, to protect your voices. So the, the, the law is meaningless when fraud enters into the equation. In fact, you've got case law that says fraud vitiates all. And that's the case. Yes? Um, you had mentioned that you don't ask them to do anything that they don't have the legal authority to do. So when you talk about the county commissioners, I see them at the RSC meetings every month. Um, so I guess my question, my question is, what do they have the authority to do if I go to them at this next meeting on Tuesday and, and say, you know, this is what I want you to do? What do they have the authority to do? Can they say, hand count all the ballots? I, I have this thing plus, but verify. Yeah. Use your machine. If you use the machines first, you actually will potentially spoil the ballots because many of your high-speed calculators have printers inside and they can actually mark the ballot. Don't do that. It's a defective product. It facilitates fraud, and they need to be confronted about that fact, the inescapable fact, first. So what you're saying is in your microscopic world, one count out of 3,147, you are going to say, you can't make me say yes to this process. That's lawful. And you create a healthy crisis. For what? Investigation. And one of two things are going to happen. Either they're going to give us all the records we want that confirms what? That we know what we're talking about. Or they withhold it, violating their own trust. So you have to understand this. In Florida's election code, every election code starts off with a provision that has this aspiring, sacrosanct nature of the vote being protected by the election trust. And there are penalties listed under federal code, or, or election code, the Florida code, everywhere. And one of those uh, penalties deals with uh, conspiracy. Conspiracy to violate the election code. And it's curious, the, the language actually highlights that you can violate the law through omission. So meaning, you show up and bring this to the attention of people there to serve and protect the election franchise. And they're not going out and asking for passport records. They're not asking Chris Jersky to use his people's audit tools. So when people ask, ask me, like, what authority do they have? I showed up here tonight from New Mexico. I've got no political affiliation with anyone here. And yet I've gone to probably half a dozen board supervisor meetings in Florida and proclaimed to them the truth about their elections. They've got a letterhead on their, their paper, their stationery. Why is it that you have to ask for these? Why are they saying, you know something, county attorney? Can we file a lawsuit? 
It gets for our own SOS for forcing these defective products on us? The answer is yes. So why haven't they? There are so many things that they can do if they'll just partner with you instead of work against you. Yeah, because like, they, they just pass the thing that they must use machines now. So, so I guess my, my, I guess to counter that until we can get that change, I was thinking perhaps we could say before they leave the precincts and before it's certified, can count. I mean, yeah. we don't have They, they always have the obligation to do the right thing. It, it, I mean, it, it's one of, the, one of the biggest pitfalls people have is just because something is legal doesn't make it moral, and just because something is moral doesn't make it legal. This is, this is why we're doing the Gideon 300 training. Everyone here will nod their head, is the Bill of Rights a higher law to statute? Everyone here goes yes. And then we show up and we assert our natural rights and what happens? We get nickel by an administrative rule that says you've got three minutes. Folks, you're not going to change and persuade someone through anything unless you show up and declare and proclaim. And either they're going to quit or they're going to come around, around you. But this, this has happened to, with some success. You had Argentina, groundswell. Four months later, they got rid of the machines. That was Javier Milieu. Everyone loves him. Uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. People administer elections, dipping their fingers in blue ink, and it happened quickly. Yes? Uh, you mentioned that the counties in New Mexico and other places eliminate... Speak up, please. So the question is, you know, for the, for the examples that I did provide, which was a small sliver, what was the process? You, you don't think, I don't want you to think in terms if this is a recipe, if you follow these steps, you get what you want. That's not how this works. We worked with an attorney, myself. We worked with the county commission and partnered with them. We did a full forensic audit in the county and eight others. And by the time we got done, we got votes to get rid of Dominion votes to get rid of the ballot boxes, votes to sue the Secretary of State, and it was dialed in, and we, could, and we provided expert reports that were about 700 pages in length. So I'm sitting there going, wow, you're not going to do a better job than what we just did in New Mexico. Guess what happened? The very next day, the Secretary of State sued, filed a petition with the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, thou shalt certify those results or we're referring you to the Attorney General. One relented, one of the commissioners said, I don't want to get arrested. He was Gerald Matherly. We still had a 2-1 majority. Praise God. They held the line. One of those commissioners is Coy Griffin, the cowboy that rides his horse everywhere that you probably see. They were so desperate to shut him down that a far-left judge in Santa Fe entertained a case that found that Coy was an insurrectionist because he prayed outside of the courthouse and decided the Pledge of Allegiance. And they were moved him from office for life. And then an appointment was made by our selected governor to replace him. There is no procedure that you can think of that based on just following steps can account for this type of evil. What should have happened was the community of Ontario should have stood up and said, no, the constitutional sheriff should have stood by Coy Griffin and said that escorted him out of the building, which is what he did. The time is late. Stop deluding yourselves into thinking it's a process or a law and somehow we'll do this. Stop deluding yourself like the lady that says we don't have problems in Lake County. You're out of time. After November, I will not be back here. If we don't win, I'll be in jail. I guarantee it. And I don't care. I'll just tell the prisoners about Dominion Systems and, and we'll start from there. But my point is this. You don't have another shot, folks. And we have people that will plan themselves to death waiting for this perfect thing that doesn't exist. It's messy. It's just a bunch of people getting together saying, we've had it. No more. No more. 
just like our founding fathers. So they sent their petitions, the all British petitions, and King George used it as toilet paper until they finally said, no more. That was the plan. It's 1776 right now, folks. That's, that's where we're at. Mark, yes, sir. And I think this will be the last one. I'm not from Lake County, but I've done a lot of work on Lake County, and I know that Alan Hayes received money from the Center for Tech and Civic Life. $195,000. $195,000. I've looked at all of his receipts. They don't add up to $195,000. They add up to a, a larger amount. So he mixed money between CTCL money and county money. And I looked at the Auditor General report in Florida. It does not include any auditing of CTCL money in any of the counties, including this one. Alan Hayes has not issued any audits that I know of that are by an independent entity that says how that money was spent. Slumber. It's my honor. And so, I, all, I, all I want to do is make you aware of that, that you should be requesting that money. Okay, so uh, the Center for um, Tech, and Tech and Civic Life is basically Mark Zuckerberg's entity. And apparently it was given to your election supervisor, and there's no time for that money. I, I have a copy of his application for that, and he allocated $48,000 to increase vote by mail on the application. So, given that our pastor has been so generous in letting us stay over 30 minutes, we're going to call it there. I'm going to be in Wildwood tomorrow, so if you want to hear it a second time or invite a friend, uh, it's, it's with the villages. Um, please come out. Otherwise, drive safe. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. God bless.